What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. As the Dallas Cowboys literally are on fire. The Dallas Cowboys currently are a dumpster fire. Um, we have... All hell breaking loose. Fans are mad. And, of course, we have the 105 fan basically calling all of us content creators morons. That's right. We are morons. Um, I'm going to say, remember when Desert Storm happened? And I, I can't remember exactly the battle plan, but we kept hearing about the Marine amphibious assault. You know, we were sitting there thinking about D-Day where the Cowboys were going to be assaulting the beachhead and everything else, and they kept talking about that, right? In the end, that's not what they did. They came through with the Nighthawks, and they just bombarded everything and then had the, uh, the A-10 Warhogs just basically scraping all the tanks and stuff. That was deflecting to change the narrative and make you think that something was going on that wasn't. And that kind of thing goes on a lot in the media. For example, when you have bad news, you typically want to do it like on a Friday evening or a Saturday afternoon because then it hits away from the media cycle. It's not covered as much as it would be if it were first thing Monday morning. So that's one of the things you have to understand and understand that the Cowboys, their whole thing is protecting the brand. And so this is what I will say is happening to us. <laughs> Oh, I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. This is what he does. So we have, after the situation with Dak Prescott's accuser's attorney going through and being able to have an open platform on the fan, at the same time the Cowboys are trying to do uh, a contract with Dak Prescott, you know, it just kind of sets up some red flags. Now, shout out to Philly 500, who yesterday was having a ball with me by sending all the pictures of, you know, uh, of Sa Saquon Barkley and all the guys they hired and everything else. And if you go on Twitter and you get past the Cowboys Twitter war right now and go to the Eagles, this should actually open your eyes because what's been happening is just like those A-10s, we're scraping the ground in Iraq. The media is scraping the ground for the invasion on Dak Prescott. What we've heard the last couple, we keep hearing about the $59 million cap hit from Dak Prescott. $59 million. He's overpaid. You know, he wants $60 million a year. And, you know, we heard yesterday on one of the shows, you know what, Baker Mayfield, you know, he's only $30 million. Actually, it's $35 million. It's three years, $115 million. So actually, it's more than 35, but they're saying, you know, Baker, I take Baker Mayfield over Dak Prescott, you know, because, you know, I, they, you know, they know they're not going to win the Super Bowl, but, they, you know, they know they can got a good chance to win a division. And, and I'd rather do that than pay a quarterback, you know, and, and now after the much maligned Kirk Cousins, man, I'd be happy if, you know, if we had Kirk Cousins contract, you know, Dak needs to take a Baker Mayfield contract with all the shit that he takes. See, that, that's, that's one of those shots. And then you turn around and you let on the radio station, you know, this accuser who's got free air to go ahead and slander him and so on. And whether it is or isn't, in people's minds, that's the narrative. You've now sullied his name. And the real thing is, and this goes back to Philly 500, I want you to think about this for a second because all of this is deflecting on the real issue. The real issue is the Dallas Cowboys don't know how to manage the cap. They don't know how to manage the cap. And they're going to put the blame on everybody else other than themselves. Listen to this. For $36 million on the cap this year, $36 million, A.J. Brown, a guy they traded for, and brought into the fold. Saquon Barkley, you could say, is one of the best backs. I still think that that one's going to blow up in their face. I, I could be wrong on that. 
but Saquon Barkley, Devontae Smith, okay, Devontae Smith, and Jalen Hurts, okay, take all four of those guys and the cap number for this year is $36 million. Clearly, what Tad Prescott said is 100% right. The Eagles' front office is better than the Dallas Cowboys. It hurts me to say that. But the Cowboys are saying, you know, we can go through and have Dak Prescott's number 59. And the reason it's 59, I want you to understand this, because they don't tell you the real deal. The reason why this year is $59.4 million is because you restructured his contract. So the first year was $17 million. The second year was $19 million, and the third year was twenty six. At some point, the bills come due. Why did you have to do that? Because you decided to pay Zeke Elliott. $90 million contract where he's gotten $75 million. A Jalen Smith contract. Of course, you ate dead money on both of those. Lyle Collins, dead money that you ate and we're even paying last year. Mind you, we're still paying Zeke Elliott this year. Mind you, even though Tyron Smith is gone, we've got $6 million we're paying this year. Mind you, you got rid of an Amari Cooper, took $13 million in dead money, and had it so that the Cleveland Browns only owed him $6 million that year. The problem is the Cowboys don't know how to manage the cap. Flat out. And what they're looking for is a scapegoat. They figure, hey, if we don't do Dak Prescott's contract, we can say, well, we wanted to sign people. We wanted to, but we couldn't because we had to pay Dak. He wanted too much of it. Guys, they're pulling the wool over your eyes. They're peeing on your head and telling you it's raining. Now, this morning, now this is interesting because listening to Jane Slater, we heard about A.J. Dillon, okay? that A.J. Dillon might be in the mix for the Cowboys. Now, understand, understand that we're talking about $3.5 million spending for a running back. That's their budget. And the reason why it's $3.5 million is because they don't know how to manage the money. You can't look at and say, we're on the same level of talking about A.J. Dillon whenever the people are getting Derrick Henry's and Saquon Barkley. And mind you, Jalen Hurts' contract is more per year than Dak Prescott's is. Dak's is only $40 million. Jalen Hurts is $11 million more per year. There you go. And so this is Jane Slater on NFL Network, and she's feeling the venom of Cowboy fans tweeting back at her. Let's go to the tape. You think? for you. 
think what they're looking to do here is find a veteran running back, not to someone from like an Ezekiel Elliott, and I hear the pushback. Why not just have Ezekiel Elliott back here? I don't know if that's a possibility. Remember, they also have cap money, uh, dead cap money that they have to deal with as it relates to Ezekiel Elliott. But I think they're trying to find a solution for when they draft a running back, which I think all of us fully anticipate that they're going to do, that you can marry the two. You have an explosive running back in the way of like a Tony Pollard type guy, and they got a big body guy like Ezekiel Elliott. So have a little patience. I'm not here trying to be a mouthpiece for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm just saying, give them some time. As for the contracts, all is quiet on that front. Still nothing with Dak Prescott. I anticipate that CeeDee Lamb at some point will get his. I think he's probably first in line in terms of priority. Then they got to get to Micah Parsons. But annual reminder, signing their guy. This is my favorite part of the year. We have officially reached the James Slater telling Cowboys fans, I can't talk you off the ledge. I can't. Just, you got yes. you to realize this is how it's done. Thank you, James. Great as always in Dallas as we are. There you have it. So, you know, in at least good news, at least I've gotten my man cave up here, my studio away from studio here at the Red Brick House where I can sit down here and I've got the big TV over there and I can bring you what they're talking about over there, which is nonsense. It's, it's just crazy. I, I don't know what's going on with the Cowboys. And here's the funny thing is if you're going through and if you're looking at A.J. Dillon, it sounds like the Colts, that they're going to even miss out on that one. So there you have it. <laughs> okay. Um, let me, let's see. If you want a Zeke type back, just go get Zeke. That's one of the ones. Should the Cowboys pursue A.J. Dillon? Uh, Foots the King says A.J. Dillon would be hilarious. Okay. Be honest. How, how long will it take you to reach? You know, A.J. Dillon could really do something here. Uh, it's definitely not going to be A.J. Dillon from DMV. Um. Marcus Mosher, I'm not opposed to the Cowboys signing A.J. Dillard, Dillon, but um, I think he's, I don't think he's great, but he would be an upgrade over what we have on the roster, which is we only have Deuce Vaughn. Uh, A.J. is looking at the Giants as a potential landing spot. So there you have it. The Cowboys. We're Cowboys. We do nothing. And as always, I appreciate you guys. And maybe, just maybe, better things will happen, but I don't know. Peace.